love story. I tell you, the cross is where we reign. I am crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Glory be to God, I'll tell you, if we leave here like we came, we're in trouble with God after all we've heard. <clears throat> Someone said, Brother Sonny, how are you feeling? I said, I was doing pretty good till Brother Haney got through. <clears throat> but I tell you right now, God spoke to our hearts. Brother Jordan and Brother Haney, it was God's message for the hour. And I want you to know God has spoken to me. Did I say Brother Gary? Huh? Now, is it Gary, Hanbury, or Haney? I want to know. <laughs> He's Brother Hanbury. Of course he is. I'm checking you guys out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we, uh, I'd just like to mention, I've had some come to me and talk about, like to go with us to Nicaragua on a mission trip, and uh, we go about five times a year. We have 62 acres of missionary training camp down there, and we take in, we're taking in about three weeks, we're taking about 37 uh, team members in, and, and uh, we'll be taking a medical team, humanitarian relief team, we'll be feeding about 25, 30,000 meals, we feed 500 children every week there on the farm. We work with two prisons and two orphanages and, and uh, in the villages there, improvise and work with the churches and we also uh, are building houses for the homeless. We're on our fifth one. God's doing a great work. If you're interested, you think about it, maybe your church wants to send to four or five people or 10 or whatever, we'd be glad to talk to you about it. We have some information on it. We have some brochures on it. <clears throat> yes, we've heard from God. You know, I think sometimes we're like a little boy I saw up here in Baton Rouge in a steakhouse, Evangelist Moody Adams and I was in there eating, and this little boy walked over, and he just stood there, and he had a T-shirt on. It said, I hear you talking, but I'm not listening. Sometimes I believe that's the case. We hear the preacher, but we're really not listening. Amen? Amen. We need to hear what the Spirit has to say to our hearts. This, I believe God's taken us somewhere in this conference. We hadn't been in a long time, and I praise Him for it. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Exodus. <clears throat> Over here in Exodus, the fourth chapter, we're going to be working out of the... <clears throat> Sixth chapter, fifth chapter, sixth chapter, in a few minutes. <clears throat> but I just want to look at it, brother. Jordan mentioned Moses this morning. And uh, you know the, all those frogs? He said, it was your choice. It's your choice, Pharaoh. You can get deliverance anytime you want to. Well, they have, we, we've had that same Egyptian plague down here in South Louisiana. And uh, Brother Marty Gidry and that bunch, you know what they do? They eat them up. <laughs> they just eat them. The frogs won't come around there anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Moses was on the back side of the desert with his father-in-law's flock. He had a Sheepskin in his pocket, graduated from the finest institutions in Egypt, and he had a sheep stick in his hand. And he was doing well, faring sumptuously until he ran into God. And God met him there in a burning bush. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord spoke to him, and he drew aside to find out what was going on. And he found out that it was God himself speaking to him. Moses, 
He knew his name. Take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. Felt like taking my shoes off a couple of times this week. Take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. And he began to converse with him about, I'm going to send you down to Egypt, to Pharaoh, and I want you to tell him to let my people go. You don't understand, God. First of all, I can't speak. Secondly, I want you to know they've got out posters all over the post office and everywhere else. They're looking for me. They've got a warrant for my arrest. I can't go back to Egypt. You're going to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my children go. Well, it come to this place here and he said, Lord, you don't understand. He said, what is that in your hand, Moses? Just a rod. Throw it on the ground. And he threw it on the ground and it became a diamond back rattlesnake. Moses fled from it, and then he said, Now you go over and pick it up by the tail. Well, even a Cajun knows better than that <laughs> to pick up a rattlesnake by his tail. He reached down, picked that rattlesnake up. God was saying to him, Moses, from now on, I'm going to be the head of this business, and you're just going to be the tail. It's, it's my business. Moses, you don't understand. I've chosen you. You're special. I knew you when you were in the bull rushes. I've called you. He's called him out of that burning bush. I've commissioned you to go to Pharaoh. Now, Moses, you got to go back to Egypt, and you're going to go back in the will of God because I am God. Instead of things getting better, you know, they got worse. You know, sometimes... When you're in the will of God, the very center of the will of God, things don't sometimes get better, they get worse. Paul said all hope that we should be saved was taken away there when he was out on the sea in the storm. But he said, be of good cheer. There stood by me this night the Lord's, the angel of the Lord whose I am and whom I serve. My dear friend, you know I believe it's in the storms where we meet God in our circumstances of life. Where we meet God. Moses met Him there in the desert. He had everything planned for his life, but God had another plan. And God began to deal with Moses. Because we're in the will of God does not mean we won't face circumstances that are very adverse to us. Have you ever felt like friend in life sometimes it appears that God's insensitive and unconcerned about our circumstances did you ever really feel that way sometimes when we see evil prevail it seems like life is so unfair have you ever questioned the Lord and say why Lord why well you know the psalmist said this in the 73rd Psalm 12 through the 14th verse he said I Lord I saw the I saw the rich lulling in the lowest luxury of this world. I couldn't take it in, he said. I, I've dedicated my life to you and I don't understand why it is that they're faring sumptuously and we're having a hard time. And I couldn't understand it till I went into the house of the Lord and saw their latter end. Friend, this isn't all there is to it, glory be to God. It's not over yet. It's not over till it's over, Amen. And it won't be over till God says it's over. We've got to remember that the eternal purposes of God may be delayed, but they're never aborted. God is going to have His way in the whirlwind and in the storm. So Moses went over to Egypt and he didn't have too good of a reception. As a matter of fact, even the children of Israel turned against him. And they came back and rebuked Moses and Aaron, and here they were, and they went back to rebuke God. God, why have you done this evil to these people? And then Moses said to him there in in the 5th chapter, in that 22nd verse, look at it. 5th chapter, 22nd verse. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Why me, Lord? Have you ever asked that question? Why me, God? 
Why? Why me, Lord? Why is it my, uh, why is it my child? Why is it my problem all the time? Why is it that, that, that you're focused on me, God? Why me? Have you ever asked God, why me? Let me say, beloved, God has an answer to our whys, and I want us to look at it just briefly today. Because the first thing God does is remind Moses of his divine authority. In the sixth chapter, let us look at these first three verses. The Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by, not by that name, but by my name Jehovah was I known to them. I am. I appeared unto them by the name Jehovah. That word, my dear friend, in the Hebrew is self-existence. We have a self-existing God. He needs no one. He needs nowhere. He's in control. I am the creator. I'm the sustainer. I am. Well, who would I? They're not going to believe me, God. Who shall I tell them that, that, that sent me? You tell them, I am sent you. And I am what that I am. And that's his name, I am. All the other names for God, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, God who heals, and all these other names are, 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 are revealing his character. His only name is I am. Who can put a name on God who's everything? I am that I am. Glory be to God. I love the way Dr. Lockridge put it when he said, you know, he said, S.M. Lockridge said, where did God come from? He said, God came from Toa, and Toa means nowhere. And the reason God came from nowhere, because there wasn't nowhere to come from. He said, God who came from nowhere stood upon nothing. And the reason God came from nowhere and stood upon nothing, because there wasn't nothing to stand on. God who came from nowhere and stood upon nothing took his, his wand and smote the anvil of omnipotence and the sparks flew upward and the galaxies seated in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And God said, you stay there. And nobody said nothing. And the reason nobody said nothing, there wasn't nobody to say nothing. He's God. I am that I am. Glory be to God. We've got to give an account to someone, but God is not accountable to anyone. He's God, amen? I think about this, uh, Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there's none like me. I am God, there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. This is what God said, my dear friend, in that fifth verse of Isaiah 46. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? Oh, listen, friend, who can we compare God to be with equal? He's God. Glory be to God. We can't compare. He has no equal. I was in North Carolina. He said, there's no God beside me. I was in North Carolina, and uh, I had a syndicated radio broadcast, and they asked me to come over to WPET and and uh, preach live from the radio station. Well, I always thought I was live, even on tape, but... <laughs> I went over there, and I, I was trying to get my audience attention on the radio, and I just, I made the statement. I said, you know, I saw something in this city of Greensboro God didn't see, God can't see, God won't ever see it, but I saw it. And I was just toying around with this at the introduction of my message, and... The radio announcer came and said, Brother Holland said, please go and tell them what you saw. Said, this telephone's ringing off the wall and they want to speak to that false prophet. <laughs> I said, now some of you folk have called in here and called me a false prophet. I said, now I'm not going to tell you what I saw that God didn't see. God had never seen it. God won't see it. God can't see it, but I saw it. But I'm going to be over at Shining Light Baptist Church this Sunday morning. 
and I'm going to preach on the subject. Well, I want you to know, when I drove up, God's hearing me tell this, they had a highway patrolman out there directing traffic. I got scared. <laughs> Them North Carolina folk will hurt you. <laughs> I slipped in the back door. There was people from wall to wall. They had tears out in the vestibule. And I just took a short cut through that introduction. <laughs> I said, now I said I saw something God didn't see. God had never seen it. God can't see it. God won't see it, but I saw it. I said, God said it right there, my dear friend, in that fifth verse of Isaiah 46. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? And he goes on to say, I'm God and there's none else in that ninth verse. I'm God and there's none like me. I see it right here today. I see something God can't see. God won't ever see it. God can't see it. But friend, I see it. What do I see, Brother Sonny, that God can't see? I'll tell you what I see, friend. I see my equal. These preachers are my equal. God ain't never had an equal. God won't ever have an equal. There is no equal to God. He's God and there's none else. He said, there's no God beside me. Hallelujah, he's God. I am, Moses, tell him I am that I am. Well, what am me? He am anything you need. I'm glad he am, aren't you? If you're hungry, he says, I am the bread of life. If you're thirsty, I am the water of life. If you need a new start, I'm the alpha. If you need the proper conclusion, I'm the omega. If you need a way, I am the way. If you need an entrance, I am the door. If you need a leader, I am the shepherd. I am anything you need today. He's been revealing that to us in this conference, and he am what he am, glory be to God. Moses, you tell him I am sent you. Glory be to God, he reminded Moses of his divine authority. I am, hallelujah. What a Savior. We, we question God so many times. But I believe nothing slips up on the blind side of God because God doesn't have a blind side. <laughs> I am the Lord. I'm sovereign. You know, that name was so revered by the scribes of the Scriptures that when they came to this title, they would change their clothes get a new pen before they'd ever write that holy name of God. Sometimes we just run into his presence. We don't revere the Lord. Friend, I want to tell you something. Noise doesn't attract God. We need to reverence God. He's God and there's none like him declaring the end from the beginning. Glory be to God. He knew you was going to be here before you got here this week. God knew all about you before you were twinkling in your papa's eye. Before your mama and papa ate them turnip greens and butter beans and became teeth, hair, and eyeballs, God had a blueprint of your life. Some of you look like you don't believe it. I'm going to read it to you. 139th Psalm, hold your finger in there, Exodus there. 139th Psalm, look at it, right here, 139th Psalm. Glory be to God, this is what he said. Have you ever read this in the Bible? Look what he said in that 13th verse. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Uh-oh, that's why I don't believe in abortion. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, if you just knew what God had done for you. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and listen at it, curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. When you were still dirt, Hello. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or not formed. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. See, friend, there's not a mistake in this congregation today. 
You're God's choice. God have mercy. There are no mistakes. Listen to me. Those who speak of accident and luck speak the language of the heathens. It's God's divine providence. And you're here because God let you be here. He knew you were going to be here before you ever got here. He knew you were coming in this world before you were ever born, had a blueprint of your life. That's the kind of God we serve. He knows everything. We can't hide anything. We're transparent before the all-seeing eye of a thrice holy God. He is all eternal self-existing. The angels, the universe, all creation derives its existence and dependence from His independence. He's God. The Bible says in Colossians 1.17, He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. All things are held together by God. One word in this whole thing would dissipate. Disintegrate. He's the Elmer glue that holds the universe together. He's God. There's nobody like God. There's none like me, God said. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he connected me to himself, joined to the head of a self-existing sovereign God. Nothing can separate us. Nobody can separate us, friend, because we are of him. Somebody shout. Do you realize what you're connected to today? Indispensable. Glory be to God. Somebody said, ask me, I, I might ask this all the time, just in the last few weeks, I've been, Brother Sonny, don't you get afraid when you go to those countries like you've been in where the Muslim terrorists are? I said, afraid of what? What can they do to me but put me in the arms of God? What greater place could you be, friend? In the presence of Jesus. They may blow you up. Well, that's exactly what they do. Blow me up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Up. I got on a plane with a doctor here in Baton Rouge. We headed out and we were right in the big middle of a storm. I'm talking about a storm, folk. God bless him. And he got, I could see he was sweating all I said, uh, you know, we may never make it down. He said, man, don't talk like that. I said, well, you know, these things have known to blow up in the air. He said, why are you talking like that, man? I said, do you know Jesus? Have you ever been born again? Well, well and everybody, he said, isn't it wonderful to be born in America? I said, that hadn't got anything to do with it. Have you ever been born of the Spirit of God? About that time, God let a bolt of lightning hit that old plane and just helped me right on. Yeah. Did you know that man, that doctor bowed his head and asked Jesus in his heart before we ever got off that plane. All of a sudden the skies cleared up. We got through all the darkness and we saw the light. Hallelujah. We saw the light that Brother Bill was talking about. That light. No part darkness. It was bright light. He said, Wow. Like Brother Manley was on a plane one time. He said, a guy said this. He said, wow, the, light, the sun's out up here. I said, it's always out up here. It never goes in. Praise God, we get our light from the sun. You got to spell it right. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. You see, if the S-U went out, if the S-O-N would go out, the S-U-N would go out. That happened at Calvary when, when the Godhead blew a fuse. Jesus died for our sins and there was darkness over the space of the earth, the Bible says. All light emanates from the light. And Jesus is the light of the world. And he said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Do you have that light kind of life today? That light of life? Do you have that, that kind of light? It's a living light. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. God is sovereign in his existence. 
the self-existing always has been, always is, always will be, forevermore eternal life. Glory be to God. What a Savior. What a great God. Moses went to the Lord and he said to him, I don't understand all this. Why me, Lord? Why me? Why, have, why is it that thou hast sent me in Exodus 5, 22? Why have you sent me? Why me, Lord? Because Moses, I am. You don't have a right to question me. You don't have a right to question God in your ministry, friend. If God sent you, God's there with you. You say, well, nothing's happening. Hold on, if God's with you, it'll come through the, the frogs, the dogs, and everything else. I want, something's going to happen. Something's fixing to happen to America. I believe the judgment hand of God's on this great nation of ours. I've said this a thousand times over. If God didn't judge America, he'd have to endorse sin. You and I know God's not going to endorse sin. Amen? Yes, God judges sin. Hallelujah, he's God. There's none like him. Why me, Lord? I'm in control, Moses. All power's in my hand. That's so big, we can't handle it, friend, when God says, I am. We just need to say amen to it. Amen? Amen. I am the Lord. If you're asking why, it's because he's Lord and he does not have to give a reason. Amen? Can you imagine God in one of our business meetings? Can you imagine it? Think about it. He says, now children, <coughs> the enemy's behind us. We're between the devil and the deep red sea. But I've originated a plan of escape. I'm going to part the waters. I'm going to dry the bottom. You're going to walk through on dry ground, and as soon as that army gets in there, we're going to make them swim. Can you imagine when he gets to revealing his plan? He says, now, all in favor of that, raise your right hand. <laughs> Oppose like sign. Can you imagine God doing a thing like that? Friend, he's God. There's none like him. Glory be to God. Should he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? This is what Job said in the 40th chapter of the second verse. Exodus 14, 13. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14, 15. Moses, I'm going to do it. It's going to be my way. Wherefore, Christ thou unto me. Speak to the children of Israel and say, Go forth. My, my, my. What a great God. You know, we have, have a, a television commercial that says, When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. But when God speaks, E.F. Hutton's got to listen. And I got news for you. God controls economies. God controls worlds. God controls it all. Amen. Praise God, His divine authority. I am the Lord. God reminds Moses of His divine authority. He says, I am. Then He reminds Moses of His divine accomplishments. Notice what He said in that sixth chapter of Exodus. Not only I am, but I have. I have. The fourth verse. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage wherein they were strangers. Notice that next phrase, fifth verse. I have also heard the groanings of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. Kept in bondage. Notice the next phrase. I have remembered my covenant. Glory be to God, friend. Not only Moses... Am I reminding you of my divine authority? I'm reminding you of, of, of my divine accomplishments. I have, I have, I have. I've been hearing the groanings. Don't you forget my divine authorities. I have done it. I've made my divine accomplishments, Moses. 
while you was a little boy and didn't know anything about it, you were in the bulrushes out there. Why? Because I let your mama and papa get a revelation. Hebrews tells us in the 11th chapter, by faith, Moses' parents hid him because they saw he was a proper child. That means God's chosen. They saw it by faith. God, we need to get a vision for our family, folk. They saw it, and they were not afraid of, uh, they had no fear of the king's command. Faith will drive out that fear if it's in God, faith in God, amen? You know, <clears throat> what we all need to do is just take a stroll down memory lane and remember where God brought us from. My God. Do you remember where God got you from? Moses, if you knew where I got you from, I had it all set up. The, the king's daughter and everything set up. Your mama was going to be a nursemaid, going to make, make, make a king Pharaoh pay the diaper bill, everything else. It's all been arranged. Have you recently taken a stroll down memory lane and remember where God got you from? The 40th Psalm, the psalmist said, Oh, thou hast brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Set my feet on a solid rock, establish my goings, and put a song in my mouth that they that shall hear it shall fear the Lord. It's a fearful thing to see God transform a human being that's been in darkness that comes to light, and God put his anointing and his approval upon him. It's a fearful thing. Some people don't want to be around me. Dear God, I can remember where God got me from. Every now and then I take a stroll down memory lane. When I go back to Memphis, I'll make a sashay down Robin Hood Lane. Where I was brought up as a boy. I go by the nightclubs where I sung and played in them. I go by one where one night after the session was over, a man was standing there with a shotgun, shot my sister and me. I say, Lord, thank you. I ought to be in hell. And here I am. You've sent me around the world, been in about 50 countries, and I ought to be in hell. You ever take a stroll down memory lane? Remember where God got you from? Friend, you need to remember that. You need to remember where God got you from. Because if you're not careful, if God gets to using you, you'll get to thinking you're somebody. That's the big thing we have to guard against. Thinking you're somebody. I remember the first crusade in Brazil where I was preaching. I had 10,000 people in the sports arena. I never preached that many people. And then they invited me to preach the Laura's Gomez Stadium, 50,000 people. And here I was, a little peon from Memphis, Tennessee. God took me out of a horrible pit. And I was sitting there. I couldn't do it. I said, God, I just want to get up and run. 50,000 people video into to 14 million I said, God, I can't do this. I remember where you got me from. All of a sudden, big, tall, one of our Southern Baptist missionaries, Perry Ellis, turned to me and he said something to me. He said, Brother Sonny, how knowest thou comest not at the kingdom for such a time as this? The Spirit of God just took me over, lifted me up. I got up and preached. Dr. Artur could speak five languages fluently. I had never majored to King James English. And here I was, I didn't miss a cue by the grace of God. Thousands of people come to know Jesus. Oh God, do you ever take a stroll down memory lane? And remember where God got you from? Moses, you don't understand I'm the one that got you out of the water. You were going under, son. I remember pulling up 
this place about 42 years ago. My goodness. <clears throat> and a U-Haul it trailer. Had to stay two weeks at Brother Jimmy's house. I didn't even have a home to go to. We didn't have, couldn't find anything to rent. Finally found an old barn over there. It was an old house. They made a barn out of it, put hay in it to feed the cows, and they came over and helped me move the hay out. <laughs> that gopher rat's that big running across the rafters. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. When God's in it, he'll make a way. It wasn't but just a couple of weeks, and God put me right down this little old lane up here in a brand-new brick house. Praise God, I'm not going to get in all that detail, but I remember, I remember Brother Jimmy sometime about 40 years ago when you and me and Brother Manley and Brother Jesse and my brother Bob, we went down to Baton Rouge and tore down this big old building, a grocery store or something in the shopping center, and, and we're under it today, all those big purlins, we tore them down, brought them out and set up this Tabernacle. I remember, friend, when, when I had to hide Brother Jimmy from the building inspectors. I remember all this. I go down memory lane sometimes. Remember what God has done, friend. I want you to know God is the God that can say, I am that I am. And he's always there. And he am. Anything you need, glory be to God. I think about it. I think about it. My, my, my. Where he's brought us from. Before Abraham needed a sacrifice, God was running a ram up the other side of the mountain. Before, my dear friend, <clears throat> before you need to go to the grocery store last week, God had farmers planting things and factory workers working and truck drivers driving and stock boys shelving and sending some money your way so he could buy your food. God's been good to all of us, hasn't he? He's God and there's none like Him. Declaring the end from the beginning. Oh God, friend. Seems like we're so unappreciative for all that God's done for us. I'd like to take you down to a place where they live on dirt floors and, and they have to go bring their water in. They don't have a place to take a shower or a bath and no facilities of any kind. We go minister to the children on the garbage dump. Little bloated stomachs and big old brown eyes. And my God. Throw away children in a world that throws nothing away. God's been good to us. God has been good to us. I marvel how the Lord has provided for us all, every one of us, amen? Every one of us. <clears throat> uh, we have a friend out, had a friend out in Dallas. Her name was Joyce. We go out there every year and I preach out there at Calvary Hill and Brother James O'Dell is a pastor and there was a lady there named Joyce and she had two artificial legs. She had diabetes, and they had to amputate her legs. And they go shopping every time they go out. You know, they like to do this thing, like ladies like to go to these things, these, you know. They go shopping all the time. And so the ladies were there just getting some refreshments, and one of them said, boy, my feet are killing me. And you've never seen such a Christian as Joyce. She's in heaven now. She said, you know, my feet never hurt me. Oh, my goodness. How could we complain? How could we complain? Oh, listen, friend, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Moses, I am. I'm reminding you of my divine authority. Moses, I have. I'm reminding you of my divine accomplishments. And Moses, I will. I'm reminding you of my divine allegiance. I Will. Notice what he said right there. Notice what he says right here in this sixth chapter and sixth verse. Wherefore, 
Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. I will take you to me for a people. I will be to you a God. Eighth verse, I will bring you into the land in the latter part. I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Glory be to God, somebody shout. I'm the Lord. What a Savior. What a Deliverer. I am. The Christian life's not depending on our performance, folk, but on His divine activity. Glory be to God. God will. He said, I found you. I freed you. I'm fashioning you and I'll finish you. That's what He says in 1 John 3 and 1. Oh, I praise his holy name. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And behold, now are we the sons of God. I'm not going to be one when I get to heaven. I'm one right now. I'm of the royal family. Listen, friend, we're strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Every one of us are foreign missionaries. We're a kingdom within a kingdom. We don't have any permanent dwelling place here. Don't get your tent pegs too deep in this terra firma. We're going to strike camp soon, friend. Listen, I am a child of God. I am a son of God. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Glory be to God. This world's not going to recognize us. We're out of step with this world. I don't know why people keep coming up and saying to me, Brother Sonny, you're a dinosaur. I don't even know what that means, but I guess they think I'm, I'm just old-fashioned, huh? You're a dying breed. Have you ever heard that? Well, some of you are. I want you to hear it. Some of you are. Oh, my goodness. We're out of step with this world. It's like the old boy wrote home from the army. He said, Mama, you won't believe it. There was a thousand of us marching. I was the only one in step. Yeah, well, that's the way we are in this world, friend. Glory to God. Listen to me. I'll deliver you. I'll live in you. I'll abide in you. I'll put my laws in your heart. I'll go with you. I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the only hope, my dear friend, for this demon-benighted world. Okay, I understand. I am, I have. I will. Did your children ever ask you, Daddy, why? Why can't I? Daddy, why? I said, well, because. But because why, Daddy, why? Because I said so. God's telling you, friend, why? Because I said so. I'm God and I said so, and that's sufficient. Glory be to God. I want to ask you a simple question. Are you satisfied with the way God's treating you? Are you really? Or are you always complaining about it? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Well, I've got news for you. Nothing will ever happen to you without the knowledge of God. Romans 8, 28, we know. Some things you may speculate on, but there's some things we know. We know that all things, how many things? All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to the call according to his purpose. I just believe God has a purpose in everything. You say explain that, only a fool will try to explain that. We can't explain that. But God has a purpose. That's why it said give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Sometimes it's hard to do that, isn't it? You think like, you know, you, you feel like there are inequities in life and, and things are not going like you, you think they ought to go. And I was over in the state of Texas and, and you know... Uh, I had a little expense there and all, and then they gave me a $100 love offering, and I had that big old bus, and 
See, revival broke out in the church the last night, but they done take the la- they, they already took the last offer, and it was too late. <laughs> it was. Preacher came, handed me the check, and I got in the bus, and I started, and I just was going to peep to see, you know. <laughs> it was silly, and it had tape on the back. Boy, when they put tape on it, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> I mean, you know you're in trouble. I have had tell me, don't, don't open this till you get 10 miles out of town. <laughs> and I just peeped and looked in there, and you know, when I saw that, I, my old heart just dropped. I can't even fill the bus up on this. <laughs> and I got mad at God. I said, God, here I am out here, busting my chops. <laughs> Just running up and down these highways for you and the highways and byways and hedges. God, this isn't fair. I was saying that. You know, and I was just driving. I was just kind of puffed up. God said, just spoke to my heart as, as if audibly. You know when you know God speaking. He said, shout about that check. I just ignored him and kept driving. I was by myself, just me and God. And he is letting his presence be known. I just kept, he said, I said shout about it. You've been preaching to those people all week. If you can't shout in the valley, don't shout on the mountain. Now shout about that check. Finally, I said, well, whoopee, God, thank you for the check. <laughs> I got on closer to I-10. God said, I said, shout about it. And I got to shouting a little louder, and I kept on to, I'll tell you, finally, I broke through, and I said, oh, God, forgive me. And I just started shouting. It kept me awake all the rest of the way home. (laughs) Hallelujah. I had a time over that little old check. God said, man is not your source. I'm your source. God is your source, friend. Can you get a hold of that? God is your source. I went to church the next week over in Alabama, and they gave me a $15,000 offering. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, friend, listen to me. Man's not our source. I am is our source. I am that I am, and he always am. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He am God, and there's none else like him. Hallelujah. Glory to God.